My name is Vivian Gama. I am an assistant professor in the Department of Cell and Developmental Biology here at Vanderbilt. Yeah, we are really interested on the molecular mechanisms that govern cell fate, and for this we are following two main aspects of uh, the stem cell research. One is to understand mitochondrial biology and structure and how they modulate cell survival, and also we are really interested on in understanding mitochondrial biology in the context of the human brain, so we are using brain organoids to understand those processes there. And the second aspect that we are interested in is in a E3 ubiquitin ligase called Col9, and our preliminary data suggests that this protein is essential for the transition of stem cells through neural stem cells. And so we are also trying to understand how is it that this protein works. So in general, we want to know how is that the cell decides not only to be a stem cell and maintain that ability to become other cell, but what are the mechanisms that are involved in those first decisions when a stem cell becomes a neural stem cell and later a fully differentiated neuron. We use uh, classical biochemistry and also molecular biology to answer some of the questions that we are interested in. Uh, many times we also complement those tools with available techniques available here at Vanderbilt, such as high resolution imaging with an icon center, for instance. Um, but our main model system are stem cells. So we have protocols to reprogram cells. So having differentiated cells that we can reprogram into stem cells using a specific protocols. We also have a way to differentiate stem cells or fully differentiated neurons. And finally, we have also the ability to now generate 3D structures or human brain organoids to understand how mitochondrial function and cell cycle biology changes as the cell goes from a stem cell to an organized 3D structure. Yes, so I was always uh, fascinated by basic science and basic biology. And initially, I became interested in understanding cell death biology, so how cells commit suicide by apoptosis. And I studied at my graduate school and postdoctoral training. I was mainly focused on mitochondrial biology. And during my postdoctoral training, I wanted to start exploring this mitochondrial biology in the context of a stem cell. And so in collaboration with a postdoc that was uh, at the moment in, the, in my postdoctoral lab, we started to look at the stem cells and see how cell death pathways were regulated. And during this time, I realized that cell death proteins not only are involved in these decisions of a cell to commit to that death, but also appear to have functions during homeostasis. So in the normal cell survival, some of these proteins are involved in either maintaining the mitochondrial structure or in maintaining the mitochondrial function. And also, in the case of the ubiquitin ligase that I mentioned at the beginning, we, the, that ubiquitin ligase was initially discovered as an enzyme that regulates cytochrome C, which gets um, release from the mitochondria during apoptosis. And so I came to realize that this model system was very powerful to understand these basic mechanisms of, um, of cell survival. Yeah, basic science is crucial to what we do, actually is the basis of what we do. Uh, a lot of the times you need to have a little bit of a translational aspect to your research, and I think this is also could be important, but in our laboratory, we mainly focused on molecular basic science mechanisms mm -hmm. that we often try to translate to what does it mean for human health or disease, but not necessarily. And I really believe that when you understand those basic mechanisms, in the future, you can understand how they are dysregulated during disease. But they are essential for science to understand those basic mechanisms. So funding is essential for our research, especially for a new assistant professor like me. So we depend a lot on the National Institutes of Health support of our research, also of some private organizations. For instance, I have been supported by the American Brain Tumor Association and the American Heart Association. And this is why sometimes understanding how those basic mechanisms uh, can affect disease are important too. And they can be, these uh, research questions can be supported by these kind of mechanisms as well. But for the most part, 
Funding is what really moves your lab, and so it is essential for what we do. So my lab is really new. We have been here only for two and a half years. Uh, so perhaps the main success is that we are up and running and that we have interesting questions and interesting research questions to answer. My main, um, I think my main pride are my students and I think they are, they started uh, initially as a very new students into the area of research and I see them maturing and really understanding and now asking very complex questions and so that perhaps in my sense is my success right now and I'm looking forward to seeing them succeed in the future and also for our lab and our research to move forward. Yeah, so there, there were uh, two main reasons why I think uh, Vander I thought Vanderbilt was a great place for, to start a new lab. The first, uh, the first reason was the collabor collaborative nature of Vanderbilt and specifically from cell and developmental biology. There was a genuine interest in or coming together from different fields to answer important cell biology questions, and that was really attractive to me. Um, the other part was the quality of the students. So I thought there were really good graduate students, and they were, of course, are going to be the motors of a new lab. And so those two re main reasons um, drove me here to Vanderbilt. Yes, yeah, so when you're a graduate student and a postdoc, one of the main advices you receive is you have to work hard, and you have to, to really love what you do. And I think that is really, true. You have to work hard. You have to work smartly too. Uh, be able to spend um, many hours in the lab is going to be worthwhile at the end. Um, and of course if you love what you do then it doesn't really feel like it's something it just comes natural to you because you are really doing what you love to do. So I think those two aspects are important. But I think that the third aspect that is also crucial for new trainees is to find good mentors. And so find mentors that give you freedom to answer your own questions as well, not only to follow directions and to follow what they want uh, you to do, but also that they give them, give them freedom to explore other areas of research. And I think that in my case, that was crucial for me. And also the other part that your mentor can really help is in kind of understanding what are the important questions that you need to answer for your field. Not only what is new and what is uh, really exciting, but what is important, where is it that you can make a contribution to your field of interest. And finally, your mentor can also help you make connections, direct you through to people that can be important for your uh, you know, research enterprise in the future, but um, at the same time, not everyone wants to do the same thing. So you want a, a research mentor that understand that you may want to take a different direction than, them, than what they follow uh, in their own careers. Um, I did my undergraduate work in Colombia, where I am originally from Bogota, Colombia, Universidad de los Andes, where I studied microbiology. Then I came to the United States to study a master's degree in clinical sciences. And then after that, I did a PhD in pharmacology at Case Western Reserve University, where I studied the basic mechanisms of cell death, and uh, that, that's when I started my passion for mitochondria. And then I did a postdoctoral fellowship at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, with Dr. Mohanish Deshmukh, where I studied stem cell biology and also a little bit of the cell death pathway.